we'll look now at dividing radicals. So you've uh, done questions, say, like this, where obviously 8 divided by 2 would be 4. And so we would do the same thing with radicals and say, okay, then the square root of 12 divided by the square root of 4 would be the square root of 3. And so if we had a question that was in mixed radical form like this, 8 root 12 over 2 root 4, we would consider the coefficients, 8 divided by 2 is 4, we would consider the radicals, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and so our answer in dividing the radicals would be 4 root 3. So when we're dividing radicals, we divide the coefficients separately, and we divide the radicals separately. In this case, we got 4 root 3. Let's work on this one here. So we have 5 root 24 divided by 15 root 2. So we'll work with the numbers. Now this is really just a fraction, 5 fifteenths. We can't go 5 divided by 15 but we can sure reduce the fraction. We can divide that by 5 and that by 5, and we get 1 third. So this fraction reduces to 1 third. And here we can go 24 divided by 2 as a square root, and this becomes root 12. Now remember, these things always need to be in simplest radical form. So square root of 12 is not. Root 12, we need to break down to 2 times 2 times 3. And there are a pair of 2's here that we can bring out in front. And so the square root of 12 becomes 2 root 3. So this would be, we'd bring a 2 out front, which would multiply by the 1 to become 2. So we'd have 2 root 3 over 3. So let's review again. When we're dividing radicals, we make sure our coefficients are in simplest forms. We reduce this fraction. Then we do the division here to reduce this. We got root 12. Then we also got to make sure that the radical, once we've reduced everything, is in simplest radical form. Now there's one other little thing that we also need to consider. So the first thing is, is we can't have fractions that are not reduced. So two-fourths, nope. We would want to write that as one-half. And the second thing was root 12, nope. Need to simplify all radicals. That should be written as 2 root 3. The third thing is we cannot have square roots in the denominator. So no square roots in the denominator. So what's, let's say we did this question. We did a question and we got it all simplified. We're down to this form right here. We got all our fractions reduced. The square root of 2 can't be broken down. So how do you get rid of a square root in the denominator? Well, it turns out it's actually quite easy. Say we had root 5. If you multiply root 5 by the exact same thing, so root 5 times root 5, you get root 25. Okay, root 5 times root 5 is root 25. But the square root of 25 is just 5. No square root. If we had root 7, and we multiplied that by root 7, you get the square root of 49 and the square root of 49, of course, is 7. So if we have root 2, and you want to get rid of root 2, just multiply by root 2, because root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is just 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So if you ever have a square root in a denominator, and you want to get rid of it, we multiply the bottom by root 2. Now, of course, if you multiply the bottom by root 2 to keep things uh, the same, you got to multiply by the numerator by root 2. So this is called rationalizing rationalizing the denominator. And that just means get rid of any square roots that are in the denominator. So you can always rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the exact same 
square root that is down there. So in the numerator we'd have 5 times root 2, which is just 5 root 2, and the denominator would be square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4, but the square root of 4 is just 2. So root 2 times root 2 is 2. And now we have no square roots in the denominator, and so this question is complete. So to divide radicals, we first of all divide the coefficients. So let's do that, so 2 eighths. Those coefficients divide both by 2, so to reduce that fraction, that's 1 fourth. And then we divide the radicals, so root 3 over root 6. Well, that would just become 1, again, over root 2. 3 6 is 1 half, so I would have something that looks like this. 1, because everything cancelled out in the numerator, 2 became 1, 8 became 4, this cancelled out and became root 1, or just 1, and this, when we divided by root 3, was root 2, so I'd have 1 over 4 root 2. So we've got to make sure these three criteria are met. We've got to make sure all the fractions are reduced. Do I have all my fractions reduced? Yes, 1 fourth is reduced. Are all the radicals in simplest form? Yes, the square root of 2 cannot be simplified. And then step 3 are, is there are no square roots in the denominator. I've got a problem here. So I've met this one, I've met this one, I've got a problem here. So I can't have square roots in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by root 2. Now in the numerator I'm going to have root 2, and in the denominator I'm going to have 4 times square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8. So now let's check all the criteria again. Are all the fractions reduced? Yes, this is 1 over 8. Are all the radicals in simplest form? Yes, the square root of 2 cannot be reduced. And there are no square roots in the denominator? That's correct. There are no square roots in the denominator. So I have successfully divided and simplified this, radi uh, this radical expression. Let's consider this um, uh, radical. So we have negative 6 root 27 divided by 3 root 2. So we're going to start by dividing the coefficients. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. And now I'm going to try to divide the radicals, but unfortunately root 27 and root 2 don't simplify. You can't divide root 27 by root 2. So, so far it looks like this. So I've divided the coefficients, I've divided the radicals. Are all the fractions reduced? Yes, negative 2 over 1 and 27 over 2, we've done that. Are the radicals in simplest form? Uh, no, root 27 can be expressed as 3 times 9, which is 3 times 3. So root 27 is root 3 times 3 times 3, which would be 3 root 3. So this should be, we're going to bring the 3 out and times it by the negative 2. That's negative 6 root 3 divided by root 2. So are all the radicals in the simplest form? Yes, the 3 and the 2 cannot be reduced. There are no square roots in the denominator. Um, oh, we have a square root in the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by root 2 again. So root 3 times root 2 is root 6 over root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is 2. So now, once we've done that, we have to go back and double check that we've met all these criteria again. Are all the fractions reduced? Well, now they're not, because I can. this is 6 and this is 2, and I can do this. I can go negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, root 6. So now, are all the fractions reduced? Yes, there are no fractions anymore. Are all the radicals in simplest form? Yes, root 6 can't be broken down. There are no square roots in the denominator? That's correct, because there is the denominator is just 1. There is no denominator written. So, as long as we have met all these three criteria after we've done our dividing, we have completely simplified the expression. So just make sure that you had, can do the little checklist here when you're dividing radicals, and, um, and you will be fine. Let's look at uh, some cube roots. Sorry, cube roots here. So negative 3 cube root 
of 4x squared divided by 5 cubed root 16x. Well, same, same thing happens here. We divide the coefficients. Can't do that. Can't, they can't be reduced at all. 3 fifths, that fraction can't be reduced. But the radicals can, 4 sixteenths. So uh, 4 sixteenths becomes 1 over 4. 4 sixteenths, 1 fourth, so this is under the cube root. And then we also have x squared and an x. Well, x squared divided by x is just x in the numerator. So I would have 1x left in the numerator. x squared divided by x is x. So I have negative 3 cube root of 1x, or that's just negative 3 cubed root x over 5 cubed root 4. So fractions reduced? Yes. Radicals in the simplest form? Yes. You can't cube root a 4. You can't, and then can't cube root x. Uh, no square roots, or in our, in our case this is a cube root. So no cube root in the denominator? Yes, we have radicals in the denominator. We can't have radicals in the denominator. So we need to get rid of that. Well, the problem is, is if we multiply this by one of the cube roots of four, a cube root of four, we're not, we're not going to get rid of that. The square root of four times the square root of four is the square root of 16, and the square root of 16 is four. But if we have the cube root of four, and you multiply that by the cube root of four, that's the cube root of 64, and that does not equal four. And that's because we have to do another one. The index three tells us that we need three of the fours before we can say the cube root of four times the cube root of four times the cube root of four is the cube root of 64. And we can say that the cube root of 64 is four because four times four times four is 64. So if we want to get rid of the, the root down here, and this is a cube root, we need to have three of these down here. And we've added two more to make the three, so we need to add two cube root fours up top. So this would become, as our final answer, negative three cube root four times four, 16 x, all under the cube root, divided by five times cube root, cube root, cube root would just be four. And so, Five times four is twenty. Now let's just double check. Are all the fractions reduced? Yes, three twentieths. Let's erase them here. Three twentieths is completely reduced. Are the radicals in simplest form? Cannot take the cube root of sixteen or x, so that's good. No roots in the denominator? That's good. So we have uh, successfully divided this uh, these radicals that involved cube roots. Now you're expected to also be able to divide radicals that have two or a binomial uh, expression, radical expression, in the denominator. So the same criteria here, are all fractions reduced? Yes. Are all the radicals in simplest form? Yes. Are there no square roots in the denominator? We have square roots in the denominator. So remember when we looked at an example, say like this one that just had the square root in the denominator, all we had to do was multiply top and bottom by root 2, and that gave us 5 root 2 over root 4, which was 2. That's how we got rid of them. When we have a binomial, the little trick that works here is to multiply by the exact same expression, but with the opposite sign. So this was a minus sign separating them. I'm going to put a, a plus sign separating them, and that's called the conjugate. The conjugate is what we call uh, the binomial that has the opposite sign. So if we do that to the denominator, we must also multiply the numerator by root 5 plus root 2. And now we've got a bit of work to do here, so we've got to multiply this times this. So root 2 times root 5, that's root 10, plus 3 root 2 times root 2 is 3 root 4, 
over. Now watch what happens down here. Watch how this will get rid of these square roots down here. Root 5 times root 5. We've got to foil this one out. That's the square root of 25. And then we go root 5 times positive root 2, which is positive root 10. And then minus root 2 times positive 5 is minus root 10. And negative root 2 times positive root 2, a negative times a positive is negative root 4. Now at first it still looks like there's a bunch of square roots down here, but, but let's now make sure that all the radicals are in simplest form. So 3 root 10 can't break down root 10. The square root of 4, though, is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So there's the numerator. Here, the square root of 25 is 5. Can't square root 10. That's also 10. The square root of 4, though, is 2. And so in my numerator, that's 3 root 10 plus, root, or plus 6 divided by... Look what happens to the root 10s here. Positive root 10 minus root 10. Those are going to cancel out. And we have 5 minus 2, which is 3. So we now have no square roots in the denominator. All the radicals are in simplest form, the square root of 10. And, ooh, are all the fractions reduced? No, I'm looking at this here, and I'm seeing I see a common factor of 3 here. So I can factor 3 out of these two terms. And that would leave me with root 10 plus 2, all divided by 3. And now I can cancel the 3's out. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I just have root 10 plus 2 when I fully simplified that expression. So now all the fractions are reduced, the radicals are in simplest form, and I have no square root in the denominator. We'll look at one more example where we need to uh, multiply by the conjugate. How about 3 root 5 divided by 2 minus 5 root 3? So can't, can't reduce any fraction. Nothing, nothing works here. All radicals are in simplest form, but we have a square root in the denominator. So we're going to multiply the denominator by the conjugate, which would be 2 plus, opposite sign, 5 root 3. And up top, 2 plus 5 root 3. Now this one times this one would be 6 root 5. 3 root 5 times 5 root 3 would be 15 root 15. Divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. So this times this, got to foil this out. 2 times 5 root 3 would be plus 10 root 3. Then negative 5 root 3 times 2 is negative 10 root 3. So notice how these are going to cancel out. They'll always do that when we do the opposite sign. They'll cancel out. And then negative 5 root 3 times positive 5 root 3 would be negative 25 root. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9. So doing a bit of tidy up here. 6 root 5 plus 15 root 15. Can't simplify any of those. And, but these I'm going to cancel out right now because 10 root 3 minus 10 root 3 is going to be gone. And this would be the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 25 is 75. So I have 6 root 5 plus 15 root 15 divided by negative 71. And um, there is a common factor of 3 here. But when I take the 3 out, that would leave me with 2 root 5 plus 5 root 15. That 3 doesn't cancel with 71 because 71 is not divisible by 3. And then usually, instead of writing the negative in the denominator, it's conventional to write the negative in the numerator. So we'll move the negative up here with the 3 and write our final answer as negative 3, 2 root 5 plus 5 root 15 all over 71. And then we can say all our fractions are reduced because these don't divide. All our radicals are in simplest form, 5 and 15. Can't, can't take square root of any of those factors. And our denominator has no roots in it. So that's dividing radicals.